So, you know, most of the time when you order stuff off eBay, like a CRT uh, or a really expensive CRT, like a professional video monitor, you're going to be lucky if it doesn't get just absolutely demolished or destroyed in shipping. But, you know, not every time it's like that. A lot of times it is, but not every single time. Uh, sometimes you actually have a pretty darn good experience. So today I want to show you one of the better experiences I've had in such a long time with buying a Sony PVM. Now this one I'm going to show you is actually going into my personal collection. So I'm going to give you a real treat today and show you kind of the economics and everything behind this specific purchase I made again on eBay. Here is the package that it came in this lovely fragile box with the straps tightened on it. And this one was a 14 L5. And so it's a multi format monitor and it was shipped by FedEx. And guys, this one was packed and shipped. First off, let me show you this listing real quickly. This was the listing rare rack mounted monitor 14 L5. Now they were originally asking right at $600 for it. But if you saw the pictures on it, you could tell it, it wasn't in perfect shape. It had uh, some scratches and dings on the actual screen itself, which I'll show you in a minute. And then there was some other things about it, but it did list it as working. So I sent an offer to this seller and I said, look, I know I'm not trying to lowball you. This is exactly what I said. I said, I'm not trying to lowball you. I restore these all the time. And this one probably needs a new tube. And I'll be glad to pay you $355 plus $40 shipping or $39 shipping. So I paid a total of $393.38, okay? And this was no joke shipped to me, ground shipping from Indiana down to Tennessee in like 20 hours time. It took FedEx 20 hours for ground shipment on this to get it from Indiana to my house. Not even a full day uh, because I was in contact with the seller. And this seller did a pretty good job with packing. Now, it wasn't, you know, packed to the T or, you know, extreme that I usually do, but it was using a lot of the great foam that I had just been talking about in that last packing video in depth. Lots of it in between the bottom tops and all the sides. So that was always reassuring. Now, uh, I'll show you here how he had it wrapped in the foam, a lot of cellophane. Just perfectly fine, some tape, very little bubble wrap, which if it were me, I would have wrapped it in some more bubble. Now, something they did interesting on the face of the monitor, which I had never seen before, was he had two pieces of foam and a piece of plywood, plywood, like quarter inch thick, sitting on the screen in between a sandwich, between two pieces of styrofoam on there. So Maybe he was worried something would hit it and go through it, but I, I just, it's an interesting idea. I've not, not seen anybody do that before. So again, here it is. You could tell it's got the scuffed up bezel, and uh, but everything else on it seemed to arrive perfectly. The rest of the shell is in magnificent shape. And like I said, this is one I wanted to get in my personal collection because I, I like 14 inch monitors, especially the multi formats. And this is the last one that I don't have. I've got the A series and the D series. And now this is the L series that are in, again, that 14 inch format that I've been looking for. So thankfully, you know, we've got a good screen here, runs and tests well. And uh, I'll just pull myself a little bit out of the way a little bit more and show you um, how, you know, good it looks. But uh, just a, a fantastic deal. And uh, I was having a conversation with somebody earlier today, you know, I don't know. I think that a restored version of this could easily fetch $800, $900 with shipping, something like that, if it's in really good shape. Now, I wanted to, before I even replace the tube, because the tube is very bright and has a lot of good color in it, no burn, but it does have all these awful scuffs and scratches all over it. Uh, here's a closer look at this scratch up here at the top of the screen, and then a lot of hairline scratches all over it for the most part. And uh, as we continue down, there's a big scuff here in the middle, some more scuffs here towards this side. So just a, a really good example of a lot, a lot, a lot of screen scuffs. And then there was this strange like uh, etching almost burned into the bezel too that 
might need to be sanded or something eventually, but it uh, it was left over from some, some kind of residue that was put onto this bezel, and that actually has leached over and, and left this funky look on the front of this bezel, and then it actually got some kind of film on the screen layer. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to remove, I'm gonna remove this bezel since it's one of the easier ones to remove. And then we're gonna take a look at this, uh, see if this tube still has the protective anti-glare layer, because if it does, it's it's gotta go. Um, and hopefully it is protecting the screen underneath all those scratches. So this bezel is about the same as the 20L5, but it was actually a little bit tougher, uh, the cables, the way it was set up, I couldn't pull it all the way out easily, but I could see down here where there's a line right there and that's where the anti-glare layer is. And so I have about two or three inches of clearance uh, between the bezel and the screen covering. So I'm going to get in here and uh, pull this screen barrier off, okay? And that's just gonna start with an X-Acto knife in the top corner. Make sure you don't scrape against the tube itself, but just kind of open up a spot where you can get your hand in there and fold it over. And uh, you know, this literally took me probably three or four minutes of just slowly pulling. Thankfully, it's very durable, so it doesn't rip. And usually you can get it off there without having uh, much glue at all or adhesive left over. But this one, and thankfully, even with the bezel still on there, easily came off and I was able to get it out of there. That little bit of smudge there was leftover glue, but we'll take a quick closer look here at this uh, bezel guard or anti-glare layer, and it's just everything. All the scuffs, it even had this weird, again, black residue along the sides of it. And um, it's not going to be savable, but it's still interesting to look at and see. Now, if your bezel is in good shape, and I mean your tube is in good shape, and you have this screen protector still in place, you don't want to use a glass cleaner like this on it. It can actually cause bubbles in it. But now that there is no screen protector uh, in place, you can use this kind of glass cleaner directly against the glass of this tube like you could any other glass. And um, I like to use a bounty sheet here at the end to kind of rub and uh, get all the fine dirt and uh, fragments of glue and everything off the tube itself. So again, you can use those other solvent cleaners uh, once you have that anti-glare layer gone. And if you don't, you wanna just take extra caution and not really use too much of any kind of cleaner. So that's pretty much it. Thankfully, I was able to get that awful scuffed up glare layer out. But there is something to say about this bezel. I'm not sure whether I can sand down. This is actually almost like a, a chemical burn from either the glue or whatever adhesive was used um, near the monitor at some point because it, it, it you know, if you, if you remember the listing for the monitor, it had the rack mounts. And I told the guy I bought it from, I said, one thing that you can do is save some money by uh, ripping those racks mounts off the side and not shipping them to me. So he did that and saved the money. But uh, I was thinking they must have been, somebody must have glued those rack mounts on the side of here. But here we go. We have it set up. And now I'm going to just play some great footage for you now here before I get completely drowned out by this audio. The rest of the video is going to be some lovely... Uh, 240p on this monitor using my new CMVS consoleized MVS Neo Geo machine, which is very nice. So again, enjoy this video and remember not every, uh, you know, sometimes you could get a good deal on eBay like this time and some, but it just takes a chance. And honestly, uh, you can't keep your expectations too high because uh, there are a lot of bad eBay sellers, and that's going to lead into our next episode, which I'm very happy to announce that we'll be having a, um, a an episode of Retrotex Market Watch. We'll get into some more details on sales and some recent activity in the CRT market. But for the rest of today's video, please enjoy this, and I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content. <laughs>